In 2024, it is more important than ever that you are focused on getting listings. Our buyer commission is under a slew of lawsuits. We don't know what's gonna happen with that. If you've been waiting to become a listing agent, now is the time. This episode is part two of a two-part conversation. If there's any questions you have, please hit us up in the comments or send us a message if you're on Spotify or Apple. Send us an email. If you're on YouTube, please give us a comment. What did you enjoy about the episode? What questions do you still have that we might even be able to go even, even deeper on? So enjoy the conversation as we move back into part two of how to craft the perfect listing presentation. Right, a lot of times we're working with people that this is their first home mm -hmm. they've ever sold. The family that I was with yesterday, they've been in the home for 26 years. A lot of things have changed, right? They've mm -hmm. sold homes in the past, but they were in the 1900s, <laughs> the last time they <laughs> sold the home. So there's three things that we go over. Let's talk a little about a little bit about those three Ps. So when you're thinking about how you, this is like Jeremy said, this is this is how this is like the secret sauce. Now we're actually giving them all the little nitty gritty details, but this is how we do how we actually get them from listed to sold. Right. So the three Ps are presentation promotion and pricing right because all three are critically important to get right um think of it like a like a stool with three legs in any one of those legs not quite right or, or weak the whole thing could collapse yeah and we have and this is where you have a chance to show and not tell kind of like with the market stats you want to show them why or how you perform don't just tell them don't, don't make them take your word for it this is where you're showing them so presentation before and after pictures of homes that you've staged maybe or how you've you've gone from messed up house to clean, beautiful house. How are you helping them get the home ready for market? This is the presentation. This is where you start talking about things like maybe you have contractors, you can help them get the house repaired or cleaners or access to your vendor list, anything they might need to help get the home ready and what you do to help them do that. That's, that's part of the presentation. You're one of the promotion experts. So how do you talk about that with the client? Yeah. So I, I do love that part of it because it's so critical. We preface this by saying, hey, here's what all of this, even the presentation, here's what we do to get you the most amount of money mm -hmm. in the quickest amount of time with the least amount of stress. Yeah. Like that is the secret sauce that everybody's looking for. So we talk about, you know, what we're gonna do to help them with the presentation. And we go in and we talk about promotion. And when we talk about promotion, we're gonna tell them one, how important it is that their home gets seen by the right people. Right, not just everybody, because not everybody's a buyer for the home. It's got to get seen by the right people. When they do see that home, they've got to see it in a very favorable manner, mm -hmm. right? So we know we're not going to do cell phone photos with us in the mirror, you mm -hmm. know, and <laughs> and cats on the counter, and right. like we're not doing that, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to do professional photos, and so in our slide deck, there's a there there's a set of very bad poorly done photos, right? <laughs> this is what we don't do, right. right? Here's a visual. And then this is what we do do. And that is a, a set of photos that were all, all our listings that were done by our photographers that are mm -hmm. vivid colors, bright, shiny, look beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful homes. They see that and like, yeah, that, that just makes sense. And then we further go into how we're going to get those photos in front of people, like what websites we're going to be on, um, how we're going to, going to get in front of people that are relocating from out of the out of the state rather um, we're going to talk about our brokerage and how we do advertise internationally and we're a tech company so we focus more on um, internet presence mm -hmm. than than anything else and we talk about how we're going to utilize social media to get their property in front of those people mm -hmm. you know the and and how we're going to get in front of the, the one person on the planet that's going to save them spend more on their home than anybody else, yeah. right? We're going to show them examples of ads that we've run, examples of social media posts that we've done, and how we're going to use our our realtor network, how we're going to use our signage, how we're going to use our, our brokerage, um, our experience in the market, our database. Like we cover all of that on how we're going to utilize all of that stuff to get their home in front of more people and mm -hmm. kind of explain to them, hey, here's here is the the secret to all of this is the more people that see your home, the more opportunities you have to get it sold. So we're going to run these ads and then we explain to them how that works. What does it look like when somebody sees their ad, is interested in it, mm -hmm. clicks on it, fills out their contact information, then what? Right. Like what are we doing in the background to create those opportunities, to get those people who have shown an interest in the home online actually in the door 
to look at the home, right? right? So we're just very thorough. Hey, here's all of the things that we're going to do. And then at the end of that section, we stop and we're like, before we get to the next P, we stop and we say, hey, do you have any questions on how we're going to promote your home? Mm -hmm. And it is a win when you get, uh uh-uh. Yeah. (laughs) Uh -uh. Big eyes and surprise, right? right? But no, no questions at all. Yeah. When you're doing this presentation, I am like 99% always never confuse the person. You want clarity, don't overwhelm them. Stay out of the industry jargon. This is the one section it's okay, I think, to overwhelm them. Taking a step back, when the client is hiring an agent, one of the main things they think your job is they want you for is to market the home. Yes. And when you sit down and you are this thorough and you hit them with so many things, even some industry jargon they may not even understand, like, I'm going to be doing the reverse prospecting and this is what that is. right? Or you ask them, have you ever heard of reverse prospecting? You explain it. This is what I do when leads come in. This is what and you have a plan for all of it, there's no way they're going to remember it all. And you might, you you will probably overwhelm them. That's okay in this space right here. Yeah. Don't overwhelm them in the other areas. You don't want to just confuse them, but this is okay to, this is more like a shock and awe right here. Yeah. Like they need to be impressed with how much you're, you're about to do. Absolutely. And then that's why that pause is important too there, because yes. now you give time for whatever is going to sink in to sink in mm-hmm. before you move on to the pricing. Right. So super important. You you cannot overdo that. And it's critical because most agents will not go to that extent. Right. And even if they're doing those things, well, I would imagine if the agent is doing all those things that they're, they're, they're pretty good. Right. Right. So they may have a great listing presentation, but most folks aren't going to go that in depth. Yeah. Right. And and talk about what they do. But then there's some things that we leave out on purpose. Like we don't mention open houses, mm-hmm. right? You may decide that, you know, you want to mention open houses. We chose not to, not that we don't do them. We just don't make that part of the promotion in our, right. in our listing presentation. If they ask about it, of course we'll mm-hmm. do them. Um, but we just felt like there are other things that are more valuable. Yeah. And we wanted the option to not do an open house because not all, that let's too. be honest, not all, not all homes are right for open houses. Right. There's a lot of theory and science, whatever that goes into that. We can talk about that in a different episode, but yeah, don't promise something you're not going to do. Certainly. When you're talking about the promotion part, yeah, it sounds great to run ads and do this, but if you don't run ads, don't put that in there. Yeah. Because that makes you a liar. So exactly. really sit down to get ready for this portion of the presentation and actually list the things that you do. Yep. Now, if you have the option to run ads and now you want to do it, fine, put them in there. Just be sure you do it and you're following up what you put in here. Right. So transitioning to the last P. Now, when we talk about the last P, it's pricing. This is not where we talk about the CMA. Right. And we get into the price. This is pricing strategy. So one of my great transitions I like to use is, is going from promotion to pricing is I love that pause there where you pause like, okay, what questions do you have about our marketing? This is a really important topic. I want to make sure you understand. Yeah. And that's when they're like, no, nothing. So do you believe we know we, you know, that we our proven process for marketing will work? Like, yeah, perfect. Because as much as we have that done as a science, your pricing as good as we are is a little bit more of an art. Mm-hmm. And that's why I want to talk about the strategy behind how we price homes. Yeah. And then we can get into those slides about pricing the home. So when we're talking about pricing, what should we be mentioning to the client about the strategy there? Yeah. And, and that's a great transition, by the way. Yeah. I freaking love that transition. So my favorite, after the transition, my, my favorite part of this pricing is this, this quote. Mm-hmm. It says, uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Well, me 74,563 times, you're a Zestimate, right? <laughs> um, or something like that, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and, and I like that, and it always brings up laughs, mm-hmm. right? Because they've been looking on Zillow right. before you ever looked, and they, they ever called you, right? Mm-hmm. They're looking on Zillow, they're looking at their taxes and all that stuff. Um, so I like to kind of start with the humor and kind of bring down the, the energy a little bit, you know, because right. this is kind of a... It could be a point of contention. Well, pricing you know? brings up anxiety. Yeah, exactly. You know, anxiety. they don't want you to tell like, oh, he's about to take my money away. Yeah, exactly. They have this thought in their head. So I'd like to start off with that. And then, you know, they're nodding their heads. Yeah. And I say, you know, Zillow on average is about 7% off, you know, mm-hmm. depending on the market um, or the area that, that it's in. But um, then we go into that pricing pyramid, mm-hmm. right? And say, hey, just before we get into this, you know, here's some things to be aware of. Like if you price your home at market value, you're going to be opening up to about 60% of buyers, mm-hmm. right? The higher above that you go, the smaller the buyer pool gets, 
right? The lower you, above, below that number you go, the bigger the buyer pool gets. People are looking for deals, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just natural that that's what it's going to be. I'm not saying we need to go that low, just so you know, this is how it works. Mm -hmm. And then kind of going into the fact that, you know, how important it is to price it right off the bat. Because what happens is the longer you're on the market, the less amount of buyers are coming to see your home. The mm -hmm. first two to three weeks are critical, right? right? Super critical, especially in today's market, because I don't want them overpricing right away. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I'll price it high and then come down as I need to. And, you know, in theory, that sounds great, you right. know, but in, in practical application, it's horrible. So I like to just kind of educate them on the importance of, of looking at the data correctly mm -hmm. and pricing it correctly and not going too high and also not going too low. You know, I don't want them to leave money on the table. Right. I think that, you know, a little bit of market data here helps, goes a long way. I have a, a slide that I show people um, that I've just recently developed where it shows days on market versus average list of sales price ratio, which clearly shows the shorter amount your days on market are, the closer you are to getting 100% of your list price or mm -hmm. more, yep. which means the longer you sit on the market, the lower your list of sales price ratio is going to get, yep. bigger discount you're taking. So showing them that really helps combat that whole like, well, I want to start a little high and make sure I'm not leaving money on the table. It's like, well, what if I could guarantee that you'd leave more money on the table if you overprice it from the beginning? Yeah. That's, you know, anyway, so I, I think that is a fantastic way to present that. I also like, this is where I, I like to use a little bit more because, again, pricing is contentious. People, it's funny that we we would never shop the way that we want to price our homes. Right. Like we, we know as buyers intrinsically that if it's overpriced, I'm not going to go look at it. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we're in the seller's seat, we want to price it high and I want yeah. to get, I want to get, you know, jackpot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we all think we have the golden ticket there, you know? So I really like to present um, a mental image of saying, okay, think about, you know, I ask it like, Hey, Mr. Seller, have you ever been fishing? I'm like, yeah, cool. Well, right now you are the fisherman with bait and you're throwing that bait in the pond. And all of those fish have a chance to see it. Well, if the bait isn't good enough, the fish are going to ignore the bait. And now what we're waiting on is new fish to come along and see the bait. So think of your bot, your current, everyone on the market right now currently looking for a home in your area. That's your, that's your pond right now. And if you throw that house out there and it's not priced well, it's not presented well, it's not promoted well, they're all going to ignore it. And pricing is one of those things. You could get the presentation, the promotion, a hundred percent right. Meaning I can do my job a hundred percent right. But if we don't get the pricing right, people will ignore it. Yeah. And at that point we're in a, we're in a price drop, chase the market down and just waiting for new buyers to decide they're ready to go back in the market and look at your house. Right. It's a waiting game. Yep. Yep. That's a great analogy. I've heard it, uh, another one too, where it's like, Hey, I've got a hundred dollar bill. And if I offered to sell you this hundred dollar bill for $90, would you buy it? Yeah, of course. Right. You make 10 bucks. It'd be, it'd be a great investment. If I offered to sell you this hundred dollar bill for a hundred dollars, would you buy it? Yeah. Nothing to gain, nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. Like we just trade hundred dollar bills and go on our way. Right. Now, if I try to sell you this $100 bill for $110, would you buy it? Of course not, right? right. You're going to lose money right off the bat. And that's the same principle with your home, mm -hmm. right? It, it's got to make sense. So pricing is important. The next thing we go over is education, right? So now we've, we've kind of brought them up to speed on the three Ps. Mm -hmm. And now we really want to educate them on the process. And again, use the language that is assumptive and use language that is future pacing, right? right? So hey, when we hit the market, this is the type of lockbox we're going to use. And I always bring a lockbox with me, mm -hmm. and I show them the lockbox, let them hold it and see how heavy it is, right? And then I tell them how it works, right? And then I tell them how showings work. This is how we're going to schedule showings. This is how we're going to get feedback mm -hmm. on your home. When we're, when we're talking about the showings in the lockbox, it's really about security. Mm -hmm. Because it's, you know, and I used to do this. I don't do it right now because it gets clunky carrying this around. But I used to have like a actual, like a combo box right next to the actual, the super box. And I'd show them the difference. Like some agents just put this on your house. Yeah. How secure do you think this is? Yeah. Have they share this code with anyone? Well, this one is one I use. And this is what, you know, most agents should be using. It requires an app on your phone that is a single user license, meaning only one person can have that license at a time. Yeah. Meaning they can't share it. Yep. So that licensed person has to be present to open this lockbox. That's much more secure. And I have a record of when they did it and who did it. Yep. So again, you're letting strangers in your home. I take that seriously. And I want to make sure you're as protected as we can be. Certainly. Certainly. And then with how we schedule showings too is important. Yes. A lot of agents will say, hey, text me 
you know, to schedule the showing, then they'll have to call you. And right. if you're not available, you may miss an opportunity. Right. We use a uh, showing service. Right. And the way, and then we explain the way that works. You know, they're going to yeah. call a showing service or go online. They're going to request an appointment. You then get the opportunity to approve or decline that appointment. Mm-hmm. Once they come in, they've got whatever specific time to be in and out. Um, once they're done, then we send them requests for feedback, mm-hmm. right? So the you guys, are, obviously, you want to know what they thought, right? right? So we're going to send them requests for feedback up to four emails. Then we're going to start calling them. Most agents won't leave feedback. All right, so now we got to set expectations, mm-hmm. right? You can expect three out of 10 showings to leave you feedback, yep. about 30%, even if we call them, yep. right? So we'll do our job. We'll call them. We'll try to get you as much feedback as we can, but we're not going to get probably any better than 30%. And then that 30% we do get may be weak feedback, right? right? It may not even be feedback. It may just be stuff that you can't even adjust, right? right. Hey, we... we we came and saw a two-story home, but they really decided they want a single story. <laughs> Nothing right. you can do, right? right? Hey, we, we, we were looking at a four-bedroom home, but we need six bedrooms. <laughs> okay. Nothing you can do, yeah. right? That stuff really happens. Yeah. So I always warn them to take that feedback with a grain of salt, you know, and, but if we keep getting feedback that says the price is too high, mm-hmm. then we're probably priced too high. Right. And, you know, I like to really point out this point too, like, hey, just keep in mind that it gets frustrating when you get no feedback, but no feedback is feedback. Yep. No feedback is a, is a no thank you. Exactly. So just keep that in mind when you, when we get those. And it's frustrating, trust me, on my end too, but yeah. that's, this is what it means. Yep. And that's really a short, short element, right? Uh, yeah, educate them on the, on the process. doesn't take a long time. You can even educate them on how the sign is going to get installed, mm-hmm. um, what's going to happen with the lockbox, how they do the showings. Um, all of that is, is education, letting them know what to expect next. And then we circle back to our guarantees, mm-hmm. right? Because we've talked about a lot of things since then, right? right? A lot of information has come and gone. And we kind of want to wrap up the presentation with that topic, mm-hmm. right? So we go back to the guarantees. And the first thing we talk about is the number one complaint, right? So what is the number one complaint about real estate agents, Kyle? We look too good. Besides that. <laughs> Communication, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> that is a complaint, man. They're, they they do hate us because they ain't us. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's communication. Yeah. Right? So we, we commit to them. One, we acknowledge it. And so when somebody acknowledges that there's an issue, the chances are they're, you're not going to have it with them. Right. All right. They're aware of it. So, and, and a lot of times you'll see head nods. Mm-hmm. If somebody's had many real estate transactions or even maybe just one, so the number one complaint about the real estate industry, and you may ask them, what do you think it is? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's com- oh, whatever. No, it's actual communication. And right. then like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then if they say something else, that's a good opportunity to address that too. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And then you tell them how they're not going to have that issue with you. Right. You know, I guarantee you I will, you know, and this is where you set expectations too, because I tell the, the sellers, my phone is on silent right now. Mm-hmm. My, this is my time with you, right? I'm not going to allow any distractions right now. And when I go on appointments, I, I do the same thing for everybody, mm-hmm. right? So I'm going to miss your phone calls. I'm going to miss your text. My commitment to you is I'm going to return them very quickly, right? Right. I'm going to return your texts, your calls, your emails. You're never going to have a communication issue with me. I set aside time blocks every day for returning those phone calls, text messages, and emails that mm-hmm. I miss, yeah. right? So that communicates that, one, you're aware that there's an issue with it and you've addressed the issue. Mm-hmm. They're not going to have that same experience with you. You have a plan in place to make sure that that's not an issue with you. And you're also busy. Yeah. Right. You're valuable. Your time is valuable because, and and when they, when they call you and they miss in, they get your voicemail or they text you and you don't answer right away. They're cool with it. Right. There's no issue. You've already set the, the standard. The expectations have been set. Yeah. I used to have a whole sheet. I'd give them like with my working hours and expected response times and all this. And I stopped doing that because it was too much. It was too oh, formal. Yeah. But yeah, I've never stopped saying this part of it because if you don't set the right expectations for communication, what do they think? Well, I'm going to text him at 930 and he's going to have to answer mm-hmm. because you didn't set any expectations yep. about your communication schedule right. or how you work. Yep, absolutely. Or I, I message him and they didn't call him back in five minutes. Right. You know, that some people feel like that, right? You got to just educate them on the process. So after we're done with that, talk about the number one complaint. We talk about the number one concern. Mm-hmm. So what is what is that? Number one concern is my money. My money. (laughs) (laughs) 
The number one concern really is that they are going to get locked into a contract with an underperforming agent and they're just going to be stuck. Yep. hundred percent. That's what they're concerned about. So it's, it's important, you know, that when you go back to your guarantees, you emphasize on these things, right? Mm-hmm. Bring out those emotions right? because emotions are what cause people to, to make decisions, mm-hmm. right? They, they justify those decisions they make based off logic, but they make those decisions on emotion. Right. Right. So the number one concern is being locked into a contract. Have you ever been locked into a contract? I ask them. Have you ever, has that ever happened to you? You yeah. know, where you felt stuck? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Da, da, da. Well, that will never happen with us. Right. And here's why. Right. And then we go into the guarantee. This is our guarantee. This is our commitment to you guys mm-hmm. where you can hold us accountable. And so revisit the, the guarantees mm-hmm. and on communication and your guarantee and whatever your guarantees are. Get a little bit more personal on this last element. Mm-hmm. Right. So for us, we have um, a photo of our family. Mm-hmm. Right. And then we introduce them to our family. Like right. We want to humanize this conversation, right. you know, and and kind of reinforce the fact that we're here to make a relationship. Right. Not just a business relationship. Mm-hmm. Of course, that's there, too, but also the personal relationship. Right. Where there's trust and and um, confidence. So I pull up a picture of my family. and I say, this is my family. Mm-hmm. Right. This is my wife. These are my four kids. As a father of four, I have a moral and an ethical obligation to create opportunities for my kids. Mm-hmm. That's why I do what I do. This is why nobody else out here in this whole metroplex will outwork me mm-hmm. because I'm a father and I feel like this is my duty and my obligation. Mm-hmm. So if I let you down, I am in fact letting them down. Mm-hmm. And to me, that is 100% unacceptable. Yeah. And look them in the eye and be serious with that, right? And be confident in that. And say, hey, this is why I do what I do. You know, all of this stuff is good, right? All this stuff is great. But when it boils down to it, you're getting a human being right. that is vested in your success. And these people that you're looking at in the face are the reasons why. Mm-hmm. And and that has been super powerful, Yeah, that closing. Yeah, I was scared in the beginning um, to add that to mine. Three? And then, yeah, I don't know why. I was just like, yeah, they don't... You know, like they don't need to see that. Yeah. Like, but when I did, it did, it, it, it's crazy how much people started connecting easier. You know, I don't have four kids, but I got a wife and a dog and it's like, okay, here's, yeah. here's what I'm working for. Yeah. Like this dog is expensive. Right. <laughs> Old Rufus. <laughs> he's a, he's a hundred pounds and he has allergies. So yeah. I'm, I'm out a lot of money every month. <laughs> I got to pay for this dude. <laughs> dude, it, 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 you know, it, it makes you way more relatable. Yeah. You know, cause most people have dogs, mm-hmm. you know, and they're like, oh, who doesn't love a dog? There's uh, three T's. I won't say them all, but um, I learned this from an agent years ago in marketing. The terriers, tots, and one other T that I won't mention <laughs> um, in marketing, yeah. like are the wins, right? And so you're using your dog, yeah. right? That's mm-hmm. that's freaking genius. <laughs> of I'm, course, I'm glad you put it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it's <laughs> it definitely, and it's a really, really nice way to wrap it up. Yeah. When you wrap it up with just like a little about me page at the end, which is what I used to. It's just like, oh yeah, there's my contact info again. Yeah. It's, it's not nearly as strong of an ending. Right, so it, it's, right. it's del- yeah. So anyway, that's it's a really, really powerful way. So I would re- definitely recommend working that in there somehow uh, yeah. for everyone mm-hmm. listening right now is put a picture of your family in there and really tie in like, this is why I can't fail. Yep, absolutely. Put that in there. And then the last thing is ask if they have any questions before you go on to the market analysis. Right. Right, and then answer any questions that they may have. But those, you guys, are the elements of a very effective listing presentation. And if you take the time to put those together and practice, 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 you will get very good at that. And the better you get at that, the more you're going to convert. And the thing is, you'll learn, right? Our, our presentation is not the same as it was six years ago, yep. right? When we started doing it in this format, it has changed completely. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've hired people on Fiverr to <laughs> redo their graphics and make it look more appealing, We've taken things out. We've added things back in. Sometimes we change our guarantees. We reorder things for the most effective flow. Yep. Yep. It's, if you're not presenting it to actual people, even in practice, you should do it 100%. But if you're not presenting it to clients and getting feedback on it, you're never going to grow. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And listings is the name of the game. Yeah. All right. So go out there, be professional. Excel above your competition because this is 2024. Mm -hmm. Things are changing, right? Rates are coming back down. People are getting ready to go by. The people that were waiting on the fence are like tired of waiting. Like they're (laughs) just accepting the rates as they are. We're going to see more business this year. May and June, we see more listings than any other month of the year. So 
be bold, get out there, learn and go do these. If you guys need any help on listings, I do have a listing mastery course that I could give you access to. So just email me and we'll get you uh, get you set up with that course. So thank you guys for listening. Kyle, you have anything else? No, thank you everyone for, for tuning in. Um, yeah, please share this with another agent that might need it. Someone else that you know in your brokerage, on your team, that really wants to make 2024 the best year possible. And this is a great way to share and show that you're supporting them and you care. Share knowledge. Absolutely. We're all growing together. Growing together. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.